Good afternoon. Uh, Andrew Benioff with Lenrock Group and the Lenrock Blog. Uh, here today with Michelle Russo, the founder and president of uh, Hotel Asset Enhancement, um, a hotel asset management um, and management uh, firm. Um, we're here actually at the Independent Lodging Congress, the first annual Congress here in Philadelphia at the Rittenhouse Hotel. Uh, the Congress starts tomorrow, and we were uh, lucky enough to grab Michelle for a few minutes before we start. Um, Michelle has more than 25 years of practical hands-on experience with hotels, restaurants, resorts, convention centers, real estate, and finance in the industry. Um, worked, has worked with hundreds of hotel assets across the U.S. and founded Hotel Asset Value Enhancement. Um, hotel Ave has over $2 billion uh, of hotel assets under management currently. Um, she's a regular guest uh, lecturer at Cornell University and has appeared on CNBC and CNN as well. Um, Michelle, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Glad to. Wonderful. Um, so our questions today are rather general, but want to sort of explore a little bit of what's going on in the hotel industry today. Talk a little bit about how your experience with real estate valuation influences your asset management work with clients. Well, I started my career as a hotel appraiser and uh, got my MAI certification. And uh, when I look back, that's probably the, the biggest base of my experience because everything we do in asset management is mm -hmm. value creation. Mm -hmm. And value is created by maximizing net income. It's created by making good capital decisions. It's created in the negotiation of franchise and management contracts. Mm -hmm. And it's created in timing the capital markets in terms of exiting mm -hmm. because a lot of hotel value occurs at exit uh, depending upon the hold period. Understood. Understood. Good. Um, when, you know, people often, just to sort of follow on to that question for a moment, people often say to me at least that, gee, hotels are special because they're an operating business, they're not real estate. They just happen to be domiciled in real estate. Um, how do you see that from your appraisal background? Obviously, you're looking at real estate valuation. Hotels are a separate operating business. How do, how do you reconcile those two things together when you're, when you're looking at um, an asset and you're, and you're helping a, an owner manage them? Uh, so, so it's a special purpose real estate, right? It's a, it's a use that's very hard to transform into an, another use, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I think that the encumbrances affect how people apply cap rates and discount rates mm -hmm. to the cash flow or the believability of the upside of the cash flow. Mm -hmm. um, but they, I mean, obviously the business orientation makes them a, a higher beta asset in mm -hmm. terms of discount and cap rates. And as a result, you know, when I was at Hancock, you know, their asset allocation in hotels was, was no more than 10% mm -hmm. because, because of that high beta variability. Um, but and that's 10% of total, their real estate act, uh, Total their, real estate that they own. Total real estate that they own, not not their total investable assets. Right, because they also had debt of and, course. Other, and other, equities. So, and this was back so in it's the a very small part. 90s. And, and I don't think it's that different for other larger institutions. And the ones that really know and understand hotels and feel like they can influence them, the, you know, we've seen certain clients have as high as 30%. Uh, invested assets in mm -hmm. hotels. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, good. Um